I'm Hello Tenfold. My name is Jabu, Jabu Makanya. I'm from Limpompo, and uh, I would like you to help me with this uh, biology question. I'm very stuck, and I could really need you some help. Please, Tenfold. Bye. Okay, guys, you can see I've already got my glasses on. You saw that was a long question, so you're going to have to focus and bear with me, but I promise you it's not that hard. It, you need to think about your basics, and then, as in all questions, use your common sense, okay? Use your common sense. Y you know so much. You have been alive and on this planet for at least 18 years. Um, you have eaten, you have drunk, you are a walking, talking biology experiment in your own body. So use your common sense. Don't always go on what you have or haven't learned. Okay, think it through. Understanding is 10 times better than learning something by rote. So let's look at our wild card question. And I almost feel like I'm gambling here. You know, wild card, cards, here we go. Question. An investigation is carried out to determine the influence of alcohol on the volume of urine produced. Okay, so immediately you must know, if we're looking at urine and the production of urine, no, we're not doing the kidneys, but we are looking at a little hormone called anti-diuretic hormone. Now, anti means against. Diuretic means to wee, to urinate. And it's a hormone, so it's a chemical messenger. Now, look at this. First of all, they take 12 healthy people. They are all 23 years old, so they're all the same age. They are all male. Hmm, girls, why do you think this is? Should we put in a protest here? But they've kept the gender the same. I suppose it's because they're going to be drinking alcohol and girls don't do things like that. We know this. I mean, girls are just so good. And then they've taken a similar height. They've looked at a similar mass. Okay, so wow, they've kept... Age, gender, height, mass are all being kept constant. So they're not checking that. Then the men were divided into two groups. They take six in each group. We've got group A and B. So, so far, everything is nicely valid. Okay, valid, valid. The constants are valid. Let's look. The two groups ate the same food, ha, ah, another constant, and the same exercise over a 24 period before testing. So they made sure that these 12 guys, everything is the same. It's valid. And they've considered all the constants. Each group is given a drink, 20, uh, uh, um, a drink after 24 hours, after this 24 hours where they all were the same. Group A got one litre of alcohol-free beer. Ah. And group B got alcoholic beer, but one whole litre. I mean, can you imagine drinking a litre of beer? Wow. Now, urine was collected from each guy every hour. Assume the volume of urine collected is equal to the volume of urine produced. Okay, so they're collecting every little drop that these guys can produce. And now... We look at the investigation as shown in a table. Let's look at our table. We have the time. So this here, we know time is our dependent variable. Why? We dictate it as the investigators. And the average volume of urine collected, this would be the in dependent variable. And this is our dependent variable. All right. Group A, we've got 599 milliliters, and then we got 413, and then 110 after three hours. So they've literally got rid of more than the liter they took in. Because remember, group A, this is our non-alcoholic, and this is the alcoholic beer. Okay, but look at group B. Ha! These guys were the guys that had the alcohol. All right, and... They're producing 599. These guys are producing uh, 643. Well, well, let's just quickly see. It's, a, it's about 44 milliliter difference there. And then five thir uh, 413 and an average, because remember it's the average volume. These guys, 504. So what's the difference here? Uh, come on, Kath, one, uh, nine. So it's 91 milliliters. 
And the difference here, well, this is an easy one. This is a straight 20 milliliters. So group B with the alcohol drink is now taking more or putting out more than the non-alcoholic drink. This is alcohol, okay? And if we add this up, just quick, 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 uh, this is a, well, it's more than a liter because that's already a liter and that's already 1.1, 1.2 liters. So just randomly, these guys are losing more than they actually put in. So state the independent variable. Oh, well, we've already done that. So, I mean, the dependent variable, it's going to be the time. Time is your independent variable. I mean, your dependent variable. Your independent variable is the average volume. Okay. Two planning steps the investigators had to take before the investigation could start. So this is planning. Now, people, please, just think about it. We've got how many people? 12 healthy 23-year-old males. So they're very specific. So we have to, when we're planning, what are we going to plan? We're going to have to say, right, uh, those planning steps, um, what are we going to use? So apparatus to use. Okay, we have to plan where it's going to take place, where and when. Okay, when we're planning, we have to plan who we are going to select, or um, who to select and recruit. Okay, I mean, th there are a whole bunch of things that you have to do when you're planning. Just come up with any two planning steps that you would have to take. But before you set out on something like this, you've got to think, what are we going to use? Where are we going to do it? When are we going to do it? How are we going to do it? That's how you plan. Okay, let's have a look now. Two factors that needed to remain constant other than the ones already mentioned. Now, we've mentioned, let's just put it here. We've mentioned age, gender, uh, we had age, gender, we had height and mass, we had food and exercise, age, gender, height, mass, food, exercise, all of that, those factors have been kept constant. Now it says two factors that need to remain constant other than the ones we've already mentioned. Now, what are we going to do here? We're going to have to look at what we need to keep constant. Um, so, we need to make sure that what is going to cause water loss, just, just off the top of my head, what's going to cause water loss if they get hot? So, we have to make sure that these guys are in the same room with the same temperature because we don't want temperature to affect their uh, um, lack or uh, uh, producing too much urine. So definitely the same room with the same temperature. Um, what else do, should we have a look at? We need to look at using the same equipment and apparatus has to be the same. We can't do different. Um, what else would we have to do? We'd have to maybe look at using the same investigators because you may measure something different to what I do. So we need, if we use the same investigator or investigators, um, we can look at the different beers. So we have to use the same brand or make, the same brand of beer. If it's alcoholic, non-alcoholic, doesn't matter. It must be the same brand because maybe one brand will affect the, the, the production of urine more than another one. So same beer. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, let's think of one more. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Look, I can't. But I mean, there we've already given you four. They only wanted two factors. Don't do what I've done and write four when they ask for only two. Okay, so... Then, two steps that the investigators took to ensure the reliability. So how are we going to make sure that things are reliable? So we're going to use, first of all, a good sample size, always. 
And this one applies to just about any investigation you do. You must always have a good sample size. Did they have a good sample size here? Definitely. They had 12 different guys. Okay, 12 different guys that were the same height, the same age, the same everything. Good sample. If you only do one person, wow, well, that person, maybe their kidneys work better, maybe their kidneys are worse. We want the same. So a good sample size, very important. I can say, um, well, Andrew eats 100% um, of his meals every day. But I've only tested Andrew. Well, clearly that would be true for Andrew, but maybe Grant doesn't. And maybe Tabiso only eats a third of what they eat every third day. So you have to have the same, same, and, and a good, same constants and a good sample size. All right, um, two steps. Let me think. What else can we use? Um, Oh, look at this. What did they do? Did they put down or list everyone's urine in group A and group B and, and, and specify each of the people? No, they took an average. So when you do an average, when you have more than one or two, then it's perfect. So the second step is they calculated the average urine production for groups A and B. There's the average. And people, this as well, this point, this for reliability, both of these are constant things that you can put in just about any question you get where they ask you, how do you ensure the reliability? You keep your constants constant, and you select what you want to keep constant because they're the variables that could affect your experiment. And you make sure you have a good sample size and you make sure that if you have more than one or two, which is a good sample size, that you always calculate the average. Okay. And if we look at our last question, based on the results, explain how the intake of alcohol influences the secretion of ADH and consequently the volume of the urine. Now, this is actually a very, very simple answer. Remember that alcohol inhibits um, ADH. It, it stops ADH from working. And if it stops ADH from working, what does ADH do? Therefore, we are going to find that the renal tubules um, are less permeable to water. Okay, because that's what ADH does. It makes them permeable to water so we can keep water in our bodies so that we can sweat it out, especially on a hot day. So if alcohol is inhibiting the ADH, we now have the tubules are less permeable to water. So what does that do? It then says, okay, well now, they're less permeable to water, so therefore we are going to have less reabsorption. Why reabsorption? Because we've already absorbed it in the digestive system. Reabsorption of H2O where? Into the blood. Sorry people, I'm hurrying up because we're running out of time here. So into the blood and therefore we are going to have large volume because that's what the question asked us, a large volume of urine, and I'm going to put in brackets here that it's going to be dilute, because then have a lot of water that's sitting in there, so produced. Okay, I hope this makes sense.